The National with Knowlton Nash. Good evening. He's not going... You've heard of the mark Knowlton Nash made through the television sets of generations of Canadians. Tonight, I'm joined by four major figures in Canadian journalism who knew him well. Trina McQueen, a trailblazing executive producer of The National who hired him. Tony Berman, a former executive producer of The National. Lloyd Robertson, who anchored The National before joining CTV. And of course, you might have heard of him, Peter Mansbridge. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really quite a, it's a very sad moment, but it's also a special moment to remember somebody who was so important in journalism. Lloyd, what, what are your memories of him as a newsman? What difference did he make? Well, before he was anchor of The National in 1978, I worked with him when he was an executive here at the CBC, and it was quite remarkable what he achieved, because he took all of those disparate elements, like outside broadcasts and special events and current affairs, and brought them under the rubric of CBC News, thereby giving them discipline and force, because it was said CBC News, which at that time even implied integrity, objectivity, etc. He set the platform for the CBC News service for years to come, and he, his is the legacy you're living with today, and it's a good one. Trina, you were here. What do you think his legacy's been? Well, Knowlton was not an immigrant, but he spent most of his early career outside Canada. So his choice was Canada. And I think that was part of what he thought, what he did, how he interviewed, how, report, how he reported, that he chose Canada every single time. And the second thing was his belief in public service, that this was an honorable way to spend a life. And he, I think, would now say to the CBC that rededication to public service is really important at the present time. And everything about being a public broadcaster, I think Knowlton would say, starts with a strong and resolute news service. Hmm. Tony? Well, the starting point for me, beyond obviously that he was, a, I think, a, a brilliant journalist, is that he was a wonderful human being. He was a, a man of incredible generosity, a man who was um, open and curious and very loving of many, many situations. And I think his journalism flowed from that. I think that aspirationally, I think that he was the kind of an ideal journalist that isn't locked in a particular time, like the 80s or the 90s, but is, is one that's more universal. I think that those of us who work with him, those of us who are influenced by him, I think can look towards his humanity as something that motivated him and should, as journalists, motivate us all. Peter, for you? Well, you know, he was a, a journalist who, who wasn't resistant to change. I mean, after all, in, in, in the period of his, his time uh, as an anchor and as a reporter, and as a manager, you know, the National went from black and white to color. It went from uh, film to tape. It went from 11 p.m. to 10 p.m. And he was uh, kind of central to all those decisions. But one thing he was resistant to was the trivialization of news. I mean, he was very big. I uh, even wrote a book on it. But he was very big on the, you know, get the facts, get them right, get the story out straight. Uh, that was Knowlton, his news thinking to the core. You all have special memories of him, and we've gone back and found bits of tape. So the one you want to talk about, Peter, involves an interview that Knowlton did with Bobby Kennedy. Let's take a quick look. Which draws the crowd, you as personality or the issues you support? Uh, I think that's hard to tell. That was one of the last interviews before he was assassinated, yeah, right? That was 1968 in June, and, and uh, Knowlton was there to cover the primary in California. What I like about that interview uh, is the question, you know, was very direct. Are they voting for you or are they voting for the policies uh, that you are presenting? And what he got with Bobby Kennedy was that pause. And that's when you know that you're on the way to a good interview, when you make the person think, especially if it's a politician. You know, it's not all spin. They're having to sit there and think about how they're going to answer that question. It was a great question. You could see on Bobby Kennedy's face, oh, my gosh, I don't have a prepared answer mm. for this. I better think of one fast. It was a great moment. Trina, you have a story about when the show was shot a few studios back, and we have tape of this, and this is Knowlton, and there's something a little odd, so let's see if our viewers can figure it out. 
The most fascinating, important man of the decade could be Kennedy or Khrushchev, de Gaulle, Che Guevara, Mao Zedong, or perhaps even John Lennon, who may have typified the new revolution in society. What is it about that? Well, you may have noticed that Knowlton is wearing glasses in that um, picture, and that was not about journalism, but it was about TV. And the problem was that we shared the studio with the friendly giant, and friendly <laughs> had, he was tough. Um, he gave no quarter, the, and he the liked, uh, the, well, no, the <laughs> giant. The giant, the, giant. <laughs> the, giant. Yeah. The, the giraffe was okay, but <laughs> friendly was tough. Anyway, uh, Every night, we would have to relight Knowlton because Friendly had messed with the lighting. <laughs> and sometimes we didn't get it quite right. And as you see, see there, he looked like a bit of an alien providing <laughs> intergalactic secret messages that were coded by the light. But we could never get Friendly to change. Uh, <laughs> eventually, uh, eyeglass technology changed uh, before Friendly gave up. Good for you, Lloyd. So, Lloyd, you, you have a story about him in Uruguay that involves a horse. We've got to yes. check this out. I'm Knowlton Nash. These cattle are the economic lifeblood of Uruguay. But it's draining away because the price of beef in world markets is falling. <laughs> I remember screening that with him one time, and I said, now tell me, is that really you, and what brought you <laughs> to do your closer on the back of a horse? And he said, well, Don Cameron, who was one of those hard-driving, hard-living characters of the earlier news era, uh, he said, uh, Knowlton, uh, you haven't been working hard enough today, and I'm unhappy with this, or I'm unhappy with that, I'm going to make you do your closer from a horse. And that was the result. And uh, I, I said, was it one take? And he said, it had to be. We had no room <laughs> for a second take. It was quite a different era then, oh, right? Yeah, you would yeah. see him in his, we have all these beautiful pictures of him in his trench coat. They were all very sort of swashbuckling in those days. Well, yeah, but you didn't run the tape of his most famous thing, which is... The pink shirt? No, <laughs> not at all. It's the time that he got his shoes shined uh, by a stripper uh, as oh, part oh, of an yeah. investigation into California society. You've I never think done was. exposes like, <laughs> yeah, that, like that. Yeah, yeah. We, well, we it's, it's aspirational, that though. Piece. Like yeah. you said, Peter, it's aspirational. You could, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tony, you have a memory. We're going to run a piece of tape in just a moment. And this is from uh, many viewers won't remember this, but the national used to be on at 11 p.m. It got moved to 10 p.m. It was a big deal. Knowlton was anchoring that night, and here's a bit of tape from that. The National with Knowlton Nash. Good evening, and welcome to our new hour. There's been another earthquake in New Brunswick, the third shock to hit that province in three days. Those glasses are back in now. Yeah, Who exactly. knew? You know, and what's also evident from that tape is how exuberant Knowlton is, Knowlton was, uh, on air in particular. And I think one of the, the challenges that we had as a program team was at what point, how can you tune him down if you needed? And he had this habit often on newscast to say goodnight, but say goodnight with such a incredible enthusiasm that people kind of fell backwards. And it was my mission to take him out after uh, work one day and kind of say, okay, can we just kind of tone it down? And I was very vague, uh, very kind of, I thought, uh, careful about it because I was worried about his reaction. And he kind of looked at me and says, Tony, I get your message. And then we kind of left. And as I left, I said, good night, Knowlton. And he, sa he said, Tony, good night. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized then that this is a man of incredible independent spirit. So we all survived that. And a deep dedication to the CBC. Really exactly. deep. And to, so and to Canada, as Trina said. Totally. Because I remember when I left, he and I uh, had an adversarial segment there. Uh, well, he was Night your boss, and mm -hmm. you quit. You left us for CCD. I did not just leave. I went across the road to the opposition. He would have been f happy if I'd been a shoe salesman or something, but I got <laughs> to CTV. And uh, he came out with a line which uh, lived in everybody's memory for a very long time. And he said to a reporter, huh, Robertson, a million dollar baby in a five and ten cent store. Mm. And, <laughs> and of course, you know, in those days, it was a bit like going from Eaton's or Simpson's to Woolworth's, yeah. uh, because uh, it was uh, the small change uh, at that stage. It's much better now. But Nolan learned the lesson from that, from Lloyd's departure, on two fronts. First of all, salary, but yes. second, uh, what was 
critical for you was the the whole idea of being involved in the newscast beyond just being the face of it. Yes, well, he and I actually had worked hard to try to change that mm -hmm. between 1970 when I started and 1976, but it just wasn't possible. Now, can you imagine an no. anchor not being involved in the editorial input into the newscast? Unthinkable now. That's right. Exactly. So much has changed. We've only got a quick point. Well, uh, just the, that line, which is a great line, um, is evocative of how good a writer Knowlton is. And I think that one of his legacies is going to be the books he wrote. I think he was like the professor of journalism for this country mm -hmm. in those books. They are a mixture of politics, history, the CBC, that has never been done before and will sadly not be done again. And every broadcast journalism organization should have those books prominently around the office. And anybody who wants a good read, I mean, I remember reading one of his books and thinking, oh my God, what are they going to do? What's going to happen? Yeah. And I realized that I had been there and that was my <laughs> name. <laughs> but he turned a whole bunch of bad days at the office into an opera. Mm. He was a very yeah. good writer. Well, he was a, a giant of journalism, but sometimes, uh, as you know, Peter and Lloyd, part of the challenge is not just breaking a story, but not looking stupid on <laughs> air. So we have, we're never supposed to show these, but we have a bit of a, a blooper reel. So just a few seconds of, of Knowlton. The National with Knowlton Nash. It's a landslide. Ronald Reagan has won another four years in the White House. The only question now is, will he take every single state in the country? It's a landslide for Ronald Reagan. And that's the National for Wednesday, October the 31st. I'm Knowlton Nash. Good night and happy new, happy new Year. Happy Halloween. And that's the National for Tuesday, the 5th of May. And that's the National for Monday, April the, the what is it, the 16th it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Knowlton would be really happy that you put those together for him. I, you know, I remember sitting at home watching the night that he didn't have the microphone on. And, you know, anybody who's been in that situation is feeling for Not him. you. Yeah, oh, yeah. But uh, I would probably have been sitting on it, and it would have been really awkward to try and find it at the time. But it, w what you learned from that is that Knowlton just kept on going. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was uh, no degree of panic within him. He, kept, he just found the microphone and, and kept on reading. He was uh, the master of cool, wasn't he? I master mean, I of learned cool, cool right. from Knowlton. Yeah. Uh, I just watched him as an executive in all sorts of difficult situations. And he was a great bureaucrat because he knew his way through the bureaucracy. He knew how to get things done. And I thought, boy, you know, I'm going to bring that to the table when I get to be a big-time anchor, if I ever do, uh, to learn how to be cool the way Nolton was. And he was cool as a manager, too. I don't think I ever saw him angry, ever. Really? And he worked by a sort of osmosis. Um, you just could read him very clearly. He didn't have to put it in your face or shout like uh, a number of news editors that we all know have done. He would just kind of quietly say that maybe we should do this and it would get done. But I think, uh, I, last well, point, Tony. Yeah, I think he also he mellowed as the years went on. And I think that the, the wonderful experience that those of us who work with him uh, on the national uh, kind of post his management years was that he was focused on the journalism and he enjoyed it. You know, the politics of, of broadcasting was really the the affair of other people. And I think that's why he became such a, a wonderful journalist as he went through, evolved. I remember and, Tony him saying, if you don't don't get an objective in journalism, just think of fair. Be fair. <laughs> mm. That's true. Well, we uh, are all going to miss him a lot, and it's mm. been uh, so wonderful to have you be here to uh, bring back some memories and uh, remind people who didn't know him just how important he was. So, time to say good night, Nolan. <laughs> Thank you. And that's the National for Friday, October 31st. I'm Nolan Nash. Good night.